Watching my dog during the course of a day, and I begin to understand what motivates him. Dogs aren't pretending. They aren't acting. There's no mask or false facade. Michael is a Boston Terrier. He reminds me a lot about myself, as different as we are. I'm not sure whether it's the fact that I raised him like this, or if he developed his little idiosyncratic traits on his own. I often look at my dog and wonder if he is living a happy life. Sometimes he looks at me with those sad puppy eyes. What's a good life for a dog? What's a good life for a human? And if Michael could teach me something about living, what would he teach me? Perhaps he wants to teach me to be patient. How complicated is it for a human to have a conversation with another human? It takes years before we could go beyond crying and screaming to get what we need. To think that we have to communicate with another animal, how do we do it except to be patient? We are learning a language of our own, a language that involves sounds and bodies. It's more of a conversation of emotions than it is of context. A dog doesn't know that I'm late for an appointment or that I have a very important presentation coming up. All he knows is that I'm stressed. Like speaking, we begin to form messages through patterns. The word treat has somehow resonated with Michael. He's good with sit too. Come is a little harder to understand, but be patient, Michael would tell me, and don't get frustrated when we start speaking in different languages. Michael doesn't worry about his legacy. I try not to either. But I catch myself wondering, what great works and ideas will I pass on to the next generation? I feel that thinking of the future in this way motivates me, but perhaps it causes me more stress than necessary. Why should I feel as though the future should be my responsibility? Can't my legacy be simply like Michael's, to make those lives closest to mine better? There's a certain expectation for humans to contribute. As we're now standing on the shoulders of giants, we're expected to lift up the next generation. However, it could be just as fine for me to make my primary goal to being good to those directly in my orbit, as opposed to thinking of how I can greatly impact the whole universe. When I was a kid, I dreamed of a life where every day would be unique. Every day full of new adventures. Such a life would never get boring. But that's not a real life. That's a storybook life where all the dull bits are edited out. It is our routines that make up our lives. All Michael wants is to have a routine that he enjoys and repeat it consistently for the rest of his life. If you want to teach a dog tricks, you need to repeat it. You need to make learning a part of his routine. And so routines are the same for us. Yes, the dog may choose comfort, but we can choose another objective for our routine. The key is that we stick to it. What we choose for our routine is what makes up our lives. What's most interesting about Michael is how he takes up space. He always seems to find the most comfortable spot. It's an amazing skill. As pleasure-seeking animals, it's easy to understand the appeal of comfort. There's this Epicurean concept of necessary desire and unnecessary desire. Michael Best represents what it means to be happy by chasing the right desires. My dog focuses on treats he likes and comfy spots to sleep in. He doesn't get caught up in the need to rise in social class or make more money to impress friends. There's no status he wants aside from reaching a certain level of comfortable. If nothing is causing him physical pain, he's as happy as a nugget. Michael doesn't chase some invisible objective. He lives in the physical realm, where all that matters is whether he wants to be on a pillow or stretched out on a bed. When you find it hard to be understood, when you're thinking too far into the future, and when you are getting too worried about something you want and don't need, Think of Michael, and remember that while you are freaking out, he's taking a nap. Maybe you can use a nap too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. 
For more videos about writing and the creative process, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.